Here on the Trading Coach Podcast, we talk a lot about accelerating your wealth, not just through trading, but by finding other forms of supplemental income as well. Well, an easy way to do that is by sharing your story by using Spotify for Podcast. Not only do they allow you to record and edit right from your phone or computer, but they'll also shoot it out everywhere that podcasts are heard and even pay you to do it, which still doesn't make sense, but hey, we'll take it, right? Video podcasts are also available as well, which is a really cool option if you're into sharing your charts and stuff like that. Best of all, it's free. So as someone who measures risk reward for a living, this is a no brainer. So if you're ready to create, don't wait, download the Spotify for podcasters app right now, or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Speaking of getting started, let's get started with the show. Hey guys, today we're going to take an alternative look at emotions and talk about how they can be a benefit to your trading and your life. However, before we get into that, I want to say a massive thank you for you guys for supporting the show in such a strong way. Keep it up. And if you are new to the podcast or maybe you're a longtime listener but haven't done so yet, make sure you follow, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, whatever you need to do on whatever podcasting app you're listening on to stay in the mix. And also, if you haven't done so already, leave me a rating and review. That and sharing are the best ways to support the show that we can grow bigger and bigger and bigger. We've had so many new followers lately. The numbers are looking amazing and so many great comments of people saying nice things about me. Well, nice things make me feel good. So I'd like to encourage that. Speaking of feeling, that goes into today's podcast topic about emotions in trading. Now, nine times out of 10, when you hear me talk about emotions in trading, we're talking about it, talking about them in a negative sense. But I got a question the other day by one of our podcast listeners asking, can emotions also be a positive? And it, it made me think for a little bit because I'm, I'm so in tune to being like, emotional trading bad, emotional trading bad, emotional trading bad, that I never really took the time to think about the good side. And like most things in life, right, it's, it's, it's you know, most things aren't 100% good, 100% bad. It, it's kind of a, a blurred line in the middle, and it all depends on your perspective or how you use them. And emotions are the same way. And one thing I want to get out the way about emotions is that we give it this negative connotation that, emotions are bad but understanding or that we should take emotions out of trading and understand first and foremost emotions are make us what we are trust me if you've ever ran into uh, an unemotional person and i i'm very close to that level right I, I lack empathy it's not always a good thing so we shouldn't kind of make it the goal to be unemotional because i, I can tell you from firsthand experience that is going to spill over to other aspects of your life for anyone that's traded for a very long time or especially ceos and entrepreneurs and business owners where they live kind of like this cutthroat lifestyle where they have to you know fire people because of you know unemotional attachments, it's a very, and, and feel no emotional attachments, I should say to that, it's very tough and it, it does kind of force you to put up this block or this wall in your real life. And it can sometimes be hard to separate that real life from your, your job life. So emotions are certainly a good thing. But before we talk about how they, be, how they can be good in trading, I want to talk about how we typically look at emotions. And there are two main drivers of human beings, right? It is pain and pleasure, right? Everything we do is either geared towards pushing us closer to pleasure or pushing us further away from pain. And if we had to kind of compare the two, pain is going to be the higher motivator than pleasure. Now, in trading, we can relate pleasure and pain to basically greed and fear, right? Greed can be pleasure, right? We're greedy. We want more. Having more of something makes us feel good. So that's pleasure. Fear, we're afraid of something. We don't want to get hurt or harmed. That is going to be our pain. And most of our trading mistakes come from one of those two regions, right? So let's take a look at um, greed for a second, right? Some easy examples of greed in the market are, you know, early, well, early target taking can be a little bit of both, but early target taking, right? We, we want money. We want money so much that we have to have it now. That could also be a fear-based thing as well. We're afraid the market's going to go against us, but 
early target taking is a greed based emotional reaction. Uh, letting trades ride, right? I believe that, you know, there are certain instances, especially if you're a longer term investor, where you can let things ride. But as far as trading goes, I believe that we should have a destination. And if not a destination, at least a, a kind of a, a, a stop limit where if the market goes against us, we should get out at that level. But some traders, they see the market tick up in their favor, and instead of getting out where they're supposed to get out at, they get greedy and they want more, they want more, they want more. Um, you could say the same thing with trade frequency, where people start taking trades that they're not supposed to take because you know maybe they're coming off a hot streak and they want to win more, they win more. Or I remember the biggest example I had when I was managing money, I, I was trading about a, a $300,000 account for a client and we were doing good i was making i was you know chopping off my three percent a month which was my goal and that wasn't enough for the client I, you know I, i'm like hey i'm on a heater three percent for like three months in a row this is awesome and he's like yeah we should uh increase our position size because while you're on this heater we should be making more money and that's a, a greed example and we ended up kind of blowing thirty thousand dollars the week after that or whatnot pretty bad right so those are greed based emotional mistakes um Fear-based emotional mistakes are kind of the opposite. So it's think avoiding a trade. We, we spoke about this uh, for you guys that are on the, the tier one trading platform. We spoke about this in the Q&A the other day about a trader who was self-sabotaging where he would be in a trade or, or have a clear signal set up, but he would be afraid to take it because he would start second guessing and doubting himself. So missing out of, of trades because you're you're fearful, you're you know not confident. Um, we talked about taking targets early, right? That is a fear-based one as well. You're not confident in price going to where it needs to go and you're fearful that the quote unquote profits that you have, right? They're not really profits until you cash out, but the profits that you have are gonna go away. So you get out of the trade. It is moving stop losses back when price is going against you, right? You, you fear getting stopped out. So you, you move that stop loss further and further away as you, as you smoke and snort the hopium, you know, praying that the market will reverse and, and, and bring you back up to break even or profit. Those are all fear-based mistakes in trading. Now, let's put, let, let's flip the script a little bit, right? So we, I think we should understand how fear and greed work in the markets. But are fear and greed necessarily bad or are they only bad for people who use them in bad ways, right? And I want to give you two examples. I want to give you examples of myself because it's my podcast, so I talk about myself a lot. Um, before, I guess when I, when I first got into trading or first got serious about becoming an a independent, consistently profitable trader, and then really kind of where I'm at right now. And, and let's look at fear and greed. So my story was this, right? I was tra I was I had success in the stock market. wasn't making enough money. Heard about forex and leverage and how I can make more money in a quicker amount of time with less capital. And it, it checked all the boxes of my my get rich quick scheme. Right, not as get rich quick as these scammers on the internet. But I, I you know I, I thought like I thought I'd become a millionaire pretty pretty quickly. I think it was like three years in my calculations or or whatnot. And so eventually, you know, I, I was playing and dipping and dabbing in, in, in Forex trading. It wasn't as easy as an adjustment as I thought. I had to learn technical analysis, which was brand new to me. I started to understand that it, it was going to be a harder journey. Um, I also wasn't taking it 100% seriously, right? I, I had a good jobs, three jobs I was working. I, I owned the uh, apartment, the duplex that I lived in. I was making more money than I've ever seen in my life. I didn't really have any debt aside from student loans and I was in a quite comfortable place. Um, so there was never kind of a, a motivation to be good because I would just blow money and I would just, you know, recharge the account next next week and blow some money again. And there came a point in time where I decided to get serious about trading and I made a big bold action that I don't recommend anyone doing, but I quit my jobs in order to pursue trading full time. I was smart about it. I didn't kind of just wake up one day and like, Whoop! right? Like in the movies, I, I planned it out and made sure my nest egg was correct and made sure I'd give myself enough time or what I thought would be enough time to be successful. But I end up quitting. And one of the main reasons that I quit was fear. 
right? Now you're just saying, how can fear be a positive? Fear forced me to quit my job because as things were getting more serious with my fiance at the time, I started thinking about the future and us moving into a house and having kids and inflation and how much stuff would cost in the future. And the $30,000 that I was making from my, my three jobs combined, well, that wasn't going to cut it. And I was very fearful that I'm, I'm old school. I believe like, hey, I, you don't bring someone else into your life until you, you know, feel like you can provide for them, right? I, I, you don't want to be a loser or anything like that. So I was fearful that I wouldn't be that husband that could provide or help provide, pull my weight in the household. And I started looking down the line and said, this isn't going to cut it. So the fear of failure in the future motivated me to take bold action in the present, bold action that would eventually lead to where I'm at right now, which is a very positive place. Obviously, there's a lot of hard work that goes into that as well. But it was that initial fear that allowed me to make that bold decision. Another part of that was greed, right? Now, I have worked since probably the age of 12, right? Anything from building houses to landscaping to camp counselor to washing dishes in the kitchen to janitorial services and and cleaning toilets to you know what have you right i've worked my entire life and i became tired of having my life dictated by someone else's schedule and, and someone else's rules, right? So I was tired of needing to obey a certain schedule, days I didn't want to go into work that I had to anyway, or, you know, in one case, being fired for no fault of my own, but the company was just downsizing and whatnot, and I was the one that kind of got cut, right? I, I don't, I, I like having power, I like having control, I like being in charge of my own destiny. Um, and I became greedy, right? I wanted to be an entrepreneur for the, the, the pure fact that I wanted control of my life. I wanted to make my own rules. I wanted to live and die my, uh, by my consequences. And ultimately, I wanted to be in a position where I only had to do the things that I want to do. I was selfishly tired of doing things that I didn't want to do. So that greediness, I guess you can say, is another thing that motivated me, not just the fear of, of, of failure, but the greediness to want more out of my life and not just settle uh, at where I was at. Now, you fast forward now, this is what, 15, 16, 17 years later, however many years it may be. And those two things still exist in my life as a positive. I have basically removed all the greed and fear out of my trading. I, uh, one is experience in the market. You, the more you do it, the more numb you, you become to it. It becomes, you know, you hate to say it, but it becomes less exciting. It's, it's like a relationship. It becomes exciting in different ways. Like, you know, I've been married to my wife for, ooh, 11 years. I hope she does uh, yeah, something right there. Um, and I love my wife to death. And we still have the same passion that we've always had, but it's in a different way, right? It's it's the relationship and what we enjoy is, is different. How we have fun is different than it was when we first started dating in college and we were young and wild and 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 whatnot, going out to parties and whatnot. And now it's watching Ted Lasso at 10 o'clock at night in the bed and, and, and chuckling and whatnot like that. So, you know, it, it's it's not boring, but it does, it does change. And my relationship with trading has changed as well. I don't get as excited over the the things I do in trading because I've been doing them for so long and, and I, I already know that they work, right? So it's not like, yeah, trade one. It's like, I expect it to win. I expect it to lose. There's no emotional swings. So the negative of that is that people sometimes settle. And, and when you settle, you start going backwards, right? And when you go backwards in trading, you're out the game. And in all that hard work you, you put into building your sandcastle, the ocean wave comes and boom, washes it away. So Fear and greed come into the equation now in my, my life for two reasons. One, I still fear failure. I remember early on in my, my trading career, I remember hearing a story from a, a woman who had become a very successful trader. I think she grew her account to like a half a mil and then lost all of it. And that is that that image, that that meeting we had is still kind of ingrained in my head that she just hit a funk and she couldn't get out of it. And everything she worked for, for how many years it was, maybe five, six years, was taken away. And that's a big reminder that it can happen. If I ever settle too much, it can happen. And I am fearful of that. I'm fearful of the fact that 
I don't really have any other skills in life. I got a real estate business and I, I coach track and field, but I don't have like, you know, if, if trading stops working for me, I don't know what type of job I would go out there and get. Um, so I'm, I'm fear to, fearful of that possibility uh, as well. And I'm also fearful, of, like I mentioned earlier, of losing control over my life. If, if I do, I'm sure I would be successful in something. But if I do have to go out and get a job, well, now I'm back in the same boat that I worked so hard to leave where, you know, I have a boss and they're telling me what I want to do. So that is a, a fear of mine. At the same time, I, I am greedy and, and, and greedy helps because the same thing, the, the greed is wanting more out of my trading, not settling. Despite having multiple strategies that work, sorry about that, was messing up the chart real quick. Despite having multiple strategies that work, I always want more. I'm always looking to how can I take my current strategy and make it better, improve on it. Even if it's by 1% or one degree, how can I add different strategies to my portfolio? You see me you know, starting to trade the DKC strategy that we just uh, I just started trading this April, or we're working on an RSI Greg strategy uh, with the traders on tier one right now that hopefully could be added in the future, right? How can I add different tools to my, my toolkit, to my arsenal, so that I can become better? I'm not settling, I'm greedy. I want, I'm, I'm not content with what I have out of trading. I want more, and for different people, that can mean different things. That can be growing a business, it could be managing money, it could be coaching, it could be prop firm challenges. Like the, the, the cool thing about trading is it opens up so many different doors. It could be different asset classes, right? Maybe you've conquered Forex and now you wanna go into the stock market or commodities or or indices or you know maybe you want to do some something completely different right you want to go you want to take your profit and, and put it into crypto or put it into some ETFs or whatever it may be there, there should always be kind of a, a carrot in front of your face a, 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 a desire to feed that hungry belly of yours you should act like you have a tapeworm and the more you get in the more hungry you get because something keeps taking it for you those are how we can use these emotions as positives in our trading and in our lives. So before you know, feel free to share your story. If you've dealt with greed and fear, whether as a positive or a negative or both, let me know. There's a comment section under the YouTube video here. Um, if you're listening on Spotify, there should be a little Q&A section where you can kind of fill in your opinion. I love reading those, by the way. And of course, you can always hit me up on social media at Akil Stokes RTM. In Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, somewhere else probably, I'm sure. Um, but shoot me a DM there and, and let me know your opinion. I love hearing your guys' stories. It, it works great for me sharing it with the traders that I work with and, and allowing them to understand that, hey, they're not alone in this journey. There are many others out there just like them who have gone through what they're currently going through and will go through what they're about to go through in their trading journey. All right. Till next time, plan your trade, trade your plan, like, follow, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next episode.